Hello, I am Mark Fishkin, the founder and director of the Mill Valley Film Festival, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 45th Mill Valley Film Festival. Yes. And I am João Federici, the world cinema programmer and Viva Le Cine Manager. We have an incredible show for you tonight. We are doing a spotlight program on Bardo, a false chronicle of a handful of truths, and it is a spotlight honoring a very special artist. So with us tonight, we have Danielle Jimenez Galcho, and uh, <laughs> so, this particular program is to honor his very special, very special performance in this seminal movie by Alejandro Gonzalez and Aritu. And you all know he's been here many, many times, and we're so thrilled to have this film today. Uh, we have another surprise for us, because we have an additional guest that we will surprise you with, a rising star and a beautiful actress, and we will hold that back for a few moments. Yeah. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, Daniel and Michelle Kenyon uh, are incredible supporters of the California Film Institute. See, that's already got applause. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Daniel, is an, uh, Daniel is a member of our uh, board of directors, and I want to just give them a heartfelt thanks for everything they contribute. And uh, also Michelle. That Michelle is the, the ones that are supporting this film here. I heard that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yes, let's talk about Bardo. Bardo is part of our Viva El Cine initiative. It's a program inside of the lineup that are which spotlights the best of Latin American movies, US Latinx, cinema, and Spanish language stories. Tonight, we are all here now to watch Bardo and to celebrate and spotlight the superb acting talents of Daniel Jimenez Cacho. Daniel Jimenez Cacho has an extensive career in films, theater, and television. Born in Spain, the distinguished Mexican film actor is one of the finest of his generation. Daniel, Daniel <laughs> has worked with some of the most notable Hispanic filmmakers like Guillermo del Toro, Lucrecia Martel, Jorge Fons, Pedro Almodovar, Alfonso Cuaron, entre outros, uh, among others. He is a five area winner, oh my God, and is celebrating 36 years career with this exceptional performance in Bardo as Silvero Gacho. Uh, it's my honor and the honor of Mill Valley Film Festival to present Daniel Jimenez Gacho if our Mill Valley Film Festival award for acting. And uh, I'd like to invite our surprise here for a few words for the, the Daniel to Daniel. I want to invite to the stage the actress Jimena La Madrid. Yeah, and I please join me in welcome Daniel Jimenez Cacho to the stage. Hi, testing, testing. <laughs> okay, testing, can you guys hear me? Great. Yes. Um, I got given this little script today, very last minute, and um, but I, I honestly, I mean, it's really well written, but I, um, I think I don't need it. Um, I really just want to speak from my heart. I have, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here, first of all, um, in this beautiful film festival. Since we arrived a few, um, like half an hour ago, the energy, <laughs> but... Listen, it's true. The energy is like wonderful. We've been to a few festivals already and this is just so beautiful. I can see you guys love film, which is so important and that you're here really to support us. 
um, because this is a really special project that we are bringing to you and that we're sharing with you. I think it's um, it's Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu's most um, most vulnerable and bravest film, and he also says it's the hardest, even harder than The Revenant. He says it's like the hardest that it took him to make. So um, it really is told is a story told from the heart, and the heart of the film is Daniel Jiménez Cacho, who I'm here to present this award for, um, and. Every moment of the film, you'll see every frame, every scene, every line is told from the truth. And I think that's what we are here to do. We're here to tell the truth. We're here to tell stories that um, enlighten, inspire us, and really go to our heart. And um, that's done by telling the truth, and by honesty, and by vulnerability, and being open. So um, I feel like you guys understand that. And so you will maybe understand the film a little bit, because it's it's a wild one. It's something very surreal. It's an immersive experience, and um, and I don't want to say anything else about the film. I think you guys will, I think you guys will, will get a lot out, out of that. So um, I'm here to tell you, Daniel, that you are incredible. That you are getting this award because you deserve it. Because I know how much work it took you. I'm like probably getting rashy because I'm very, very emotional. Um, and I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's a very surreal moment in, in, the, in this because in the film, something similar happens. Um, so this is really crazy for me. Yeah, this is like, I've done this scene. I've done this scene in a way. So yeah, so nothing. I'm here to tell you, Daniel, I'm so honored to present to you Mill Valley's acting award, Mill Valley Film Festival Acting Award. That's what it's called. And Thank you. I'm so grateful to be to to present it with you. Here it is. Here you go. No, this. Oh, I have to correct you because you said I s I've started 36, but it's yeah. now 40. <laughs> I must confess. Yeah, 40. Because you theater you know, and I didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. didn't. Ah, you, you the movies. Yeah. We are here I for mean, the movies. But I, I know. Yeah. 40 but years sorry, ago. Sorry, sorry. I'm. Yeah. But this is the. I, I'm so grateful to you because this is the first award I receive in the United States. So, no matter, thank you, no matter what comes next, I think this prize will have a special place in my heart. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And it's really funny how she's presenting me. You're going to see the movie. It's, of course, it's not going to be exactly like the movie because it's, that part is, Terrific, they're terrific, terrible, horrifying, I must say, <laughs> horrifying, <laughs> you'll see. But uh, I think if you gave me this award, it's also because you recognize the, the movie, I think. All the work that's there, all the work of Alejandro, all the work of, you will say it's a, there's a huge amount of work in there, I know a lot of, passion, commitment, a lot of time. We spent like 28 weeks shooting. It was so, so many things happened. I just want to say that Alejandro tried to, well, he put some of his, uh, some parts of his life, personal moments that he wanted to share with the audience. But I don't know how so quickly the movie became my personal story. It was not more about portraying, trying to portray Alejandro's life, but mine. So I didn't construct, I didn't build a character. I never was thinking about the dramatic arc and what should I do. Every day it was just, how do you feel today? 
in my meditation, so I said, well, I feel this way. Well, that's the way the character is going to be today. And every day was like that. No planning, just being present. This is the first time I did a work like this. <laughs> and and uh, you haven't seen it, but <laughs> I think it worked. <laughs> At least for me, it was, um, I grew, you know, I think I grew in the, in the way of, of, of working. So it was important for me. So... Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Try to hold your rational capacities <laughs> and open your heart because this is a chaos. It's really a chaos. It's like the, 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 the flu of the conscious, no? So be open. Be open and enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Viva. So Danielle and Jimena will be back after the movie. I'm sure you'll have lots of questions and we'll try to get to as many as we can. Yeah. We'll see you after the film. Bye bye. Good night. What do you think? I think we should bring Dan Danielle and Jimena up to the stage, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's obvious that award was well deserved. <laughs> <laughs> um, you two of you have worked together before, is that true? And and uh, killing Sarah, is that? Am I? Oh yeah, we did. I'm just moving so I can face all of you guys. <laughs> um, yeah, we well yeah we did work on that. He was my uh, psychiatrist in a TV show, and now he's my father. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> what's the big difference? <laughs> Not much. Well, the relationship between father and daughter is very moving, and I, I would like to talk at one point about certainly the scene uh, by the pool. But I, you started to talk about it in the introduction, and I know we've talked a little bit about it, but you mentioned that this film, and I'm wondering for both of you, has become like your own. And I was thinking about this with Alejandro. This film is so deeply personal, um, and uh, even referring at the end to the song, his, what was that song, Father? You know, it, there was a song that Alejandro remembered. But it's hard to imagine even him working with an editor because it's so much all in his head. And I was wondering how much was on paper, and I'm presuming it was, was but you had mentioned that the film became your own, in a sense. So where did both of you go for the inspiration and the backstory here? Did you go to Alejandro or did you go to something personal for you? Um, I think personally, I went to both. Um, he has a daughter who is very similar in age to me and um, I never got to read the script. So, so yeah, I, I would get the scene like two, three days beforehand. Uh, for a couple, for the theater scene, I asked them, like, please, I need this, like, 10 days before at least so I can <laughs> rehearse this. Um, but I kind of used my own experience, and I never really asked his daughter or him or anything like that, because I think what he liked about, what he wanted for his film was choosing specific, uh, the cast, and trusting that, you know, he saw something in us that was like, you are, the, you are Camila, or you are Silverio, you take control now, you know, he, it was just, I think he did have a script that you can talk more about that, but that was very, everything was very set in stone. 
Um, we are, we've been asked, like, why are you improvising in, in the scenes? Because it feels so fluid and um, there's not really any improvisation uh, text-wise. It was just so written down and so well rehearsed again and again that it ends up flowing like water in the film. But yeah, I definitely grabbed from my own experiences. I relate to Camila because I grew up um, away from Mexico my whole life and then I only arrived in Mexico like f three years ago or four years ago. And um, so yeah, there's very many things I related to it. And in an interview I did, I, I was talking about how I, I felt like Alejandro wrote the film and the universe found me for the film. And it was like all very directed at me. Like I really relate to it. So it was quite easy for me. Yeah. And actually, because of your life growing up in Dubai and New York and other places, and certainly a big theme of this, of course, is the stranger in a strange land of how it feels not to be without that country. So yeah. that must have been fairly easy for you to step into that? Yeah, absolutely. Even the, the O-1 visa experiences, I have it when they, I've been sent to that the room and um, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. And, and it, I mean, I'm, I just feel like everyone as just people of the world, you, you just feel like we should belong everywhere and we shouldn't, there shouldn't be these like boundaries or these borders, but there are. And it's, it f I think it feels weird to everyone, you know, like we all have had an experience, not only in an airport that we feel like someone has made us feel like we don't belong there. Um, and I, I, <laughs> and I, um, yeah, I don't. I think that the movie short, sort of like shows that, and then hopefully we can sort of all, like move away from that and move towards something where we m feel like we can belong more. Here, here, uh, Daniel. <laughs> what was your both process like, and obviously, as I started the question with the, the where you drove, got the motion you know, for this 28-week odyssey that you were on in every scene, every minute, it was you. <laughs> well, I, I asked Alejandro to let me read the script. <laughs> <laughs> well, I read it once. Once, no, he told me, okay, read it, but, and you can keep it, but don't, don't study it, no, like, we normally do, we study it a lot, we read it a lot, and we design this dramatic arc, and this is the climax, and then this is gonna happen, and it should happen this, in that scene, whatever. So as I told you in the beginning, no, I, this time I, I, I didn't do that. But it's true that always when, uh, when I work, I always use my personal life and my personal experience, that's the material I, used to perform, but in this case, since I was not uh, constructing a character, it became very, very personal, but in a, in a way that I'm still trying to, to understand how I forgot completely about Alejandro, and it was about me, it was about me. Me, for example, uh, there's a scene, you remember the scene in the bathroom with the father? Oh, yeah. And my father died like 11 years ago. And when I was doing this scene, suddenly I felt my father. And I realized I haven't, since he died, I never talked to him before. So it was, wow, father. I never talked to you since you were dead. And then I said, oh, welcome. This is Alejandro. We are making a movie. <laughs> and thanks to that scene, shooting that scene, I started a relation with my father. And uh, it was amazing for me, no? very, very, very magical. And just this is just an example. So many things happened also in the in the scene where I meet my family that I'm walking in the desert and I, they are behind. That day when I was, when we were shooting that, I said, I'm going to remember this the day I die. I'm sure I'm going to remember this, no? Because also something funny is that before doing the movie, I just had this idea that I wish I could die consciously. This idea came into my mind. 
I would be beautiful that when I die, this is going to be my last living action. Like, whew, we go. No? So I got in the internet, and then I saw that Buddhists and, and, and Hinduists, that's what they do. They exercise and they practice so that when they die, they are conscious and they it's not dying, it's passing to another dimension. And then I get the script and I read it and I say, wow, my dream. I can, yeah, I can rehearse it. I can start and do the practice right now. What a privilege. Because you saw the movie, it's like he's like watching his death in a way. He's present in his And I say, I say, oh God, thank you. Great spirit, no? So I had this, you see, to see another, another subject, another item that was personal. Very, very personal, no? And when we saw each other in Colorado, we talked a little bit about the scene in the bathroom, and not quite as specifically as you just talked about now, but to me that's one of the most emotional ones. And did you know in advance what he was going to do, making you small with the special effects? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I knew. It was a, a, a little sad story because the kid, he didn't know. He thought he was going to be in the movie. He didn't know it was just his body. You know? Well, two days, three days later, then they told him, and he was like, oh, just my body? It was sad. It was sad. And uh, what I like very much of this scene is it's, it, it, it could have been a very sentimental, melodramatic stuff. But since you see this freak there, <laughs> Everything becomes, I think it's more interesting, no? It's not just a, a scene to, to cry and all that because it's, it's like a freak, no? I watch it and I see. It's, <laughs> it's like a freak, what but is it's this? very, very, I thought, very, very emotional and effective. Yeah. <laughs> it is. For me too, still. Yeah. Yeah, I normally, I'm not really moved by my work, you know? Yeah, I like I, I look at it and say, well, yeah, well, fine, no, whatever. <laughs> and this is the first time that uh, I cry in a scene. I, I, I feel a little ashamed of saying this. Because how are you going to cry in a scene that you made? It's, <laughs> it's very, I don't know, but, but it happens. It happens to me when I see it. That scene and also the scene where the little baby goes in the ocean. I think it's the most uh, vivid metaphor of the human soul. We are all lost, harm harmless in this infinite ocean and we don't know where we're going and we don't know if we're going to survive. We know nothing. Because it's just like a turtle, no? I was like, I, yeah. when, I, when I saw the film, I didn't imagine it was going to be like that, and it's like this turtle. And actually, my father, my real father in real life, we have this like thing called our turtle connection. And it was like once when I was like 17, and I didn't know what I was going to do with my life and what I wanted. And he was just like, we were in Cancun, and they, we, we released a turtle that night, a baby turtle, into the ocean. And... It was the most like emotional experience of my life, like releasing this baby turtle with my dad. And he was like, you see how it's taking those little step by step? That's you. You're going to take your step by step. And then when I saw the film and I saw the, the, the Mateo and, and he felt like a turtle and I cried so much. Yeah, it was so it's really powerful. Well, speaking of the father son relation, the father daughter relationship, uh, th that was another really moving scene. And obviously, uh, all the th major themes of immigration, not being without a country, but also the differences in the United States and Mexico. When you say in Mexico, the fruit tastes like fruit versus in the United States, like something else. It happens every time I travel. Yeah. So tell us about the making of that scene for the two of you. And 
um, when was it done within the shooting and 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 uh, how long did it take and what were your 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 references on that as well um, so that scene took two days to shoot we rehearsed it so much beforehand like six months before we went to this place like beautiful hacienda and we were rehearsing it and we and alejandro had a timer and we had to get that scene under one minute like we had to do the scene like this <laughs> and we would like get like 45 seconds like wow um but the scene really is much longer than that but um yeah, I mean, so we rehearsed it a lot, and then we shot it in two days in this beautiful house in Los Cabos. And um, it was under, under the sun and in, in this pool. And honestly, for me, the minute I started shooting that scene, I actually got in trouble by Alejandro because um, Daniel was making me laugh so much, like from the beginning that we were f shooting it. And I just couldn't concentrate, but you know, as an actor, that's fun because I had this amazing father who, to me, I call him my dad in, in all the time, and um, and I was just having fun with him. And then, yes, I had to get to work, so I eventually I was like, "Yes, sir, I'm, I'm ready." Like he was like, "Are you ready, or what? Like, what's going on?" And I'm ready. And then we shot the scene, <laughs> that with us, and um, I think it was just this beautiful in the moment, always um, ex experience that we were just, I gave you my line, and it was real. Like, we had re rehearsed it so much that what I was saying, I don't even, like, remember, I was just saying it and me really meaning it, and we were just so in that moment yeah. that it was a real experience. And then, like, I love, because when we rehearsed it, he was like, this has to have an arc, and it has to begin melancholic and nostalgic about what never was, um, you know, this experience. And then you end your laugh. I was la I'm laughing at him uh, with him at, at the end um, about just can't even doesn't know the train stations in Santa Monica and uh, or in LA and and um, that's an experience that I think we long to have with our parents like this connection that Camila finds at the end with her dad, which I really love. Um, so yeah, it was super beautiful for me. That scene is so tasty. Um, it's so full of life and um, really lucky as an actor to get to do that scene. And uh, also this uh, technique to repeat the text very fast, really, 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 really fast, so that you are not rehearsing properly, like saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, just to, to, to have the lines mechanically, automatically, and then let the scene flow by his own rhythm and let's say we, we were not planning nothing no i remember you had to fight for the with the cold yeah. the water was cold and yeah. you were we were like eight hours in that uh, water yeah i, I yeah. asked for like a wetsuit but it didn't help because then it, it made was, me like she was like blah, 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 blah. yeah but so you managed to mix that with the, your feeling no? yeah. it was very good because i was like normally that my, when I'm doing that, like my body's like defending the cold and stuff, and and so I, my acting wise, like I can't cry or I can't, you know, I'm just like focused on def like just <laughs> not being yeah. cold. But it actually worked. And when I saw the scene, I was like, "What? We got a take like that? Like that take happened? Like I was so happy about about it. And my my lips were like blue, and in in the there's blue in in the movie, and I'm just like, well, it works. It's Bardo. Like anything works. So yeah. <laughs> And we spent two days doing it because Alejandro wanted from the side and the other side, and we were really relaxed. But it not, I don't know, f with with you how he he was dealing that. Mm. Yeah. But he was like, okay, we do another one. Everything yeah. seemed yeah. to yeah. work. You know, there were never. But this happened for me during the whole movie. Mm -hmm. No, he was like, excellent. Next, go, go, <laughs> go. I was like, it's going to be so easy. <laughs> this can't be so easy because for me, it has never, at least every time I do a work since now, maybe I'm changing now. It's like climbing a mountain and, and getting to the top with your knees destroyed and yes, I made it. Yeah, yeah. Then you have the feeling you are really working. No, I think this maybe my Catholic education. No? Like, Perhaps. yeah, we're suffering, and yes. Well, let me ask Otherwise, you. no. And it, it, it was the opposite in this movie. No? After the fourth day, it 
was like, is, is it really going to be so easy? <laughs> well, how did the dance scenes uh, turn out for you? Were those easy or were those uh, difficult? You, you could, dance scenes? The dance scenes, and when your daughter arrives from Boston and you're at the journalist party, there is some, quite a lot of fancy dancing going on there. Well, maybe there, the 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 most uh, the technical thing was like because the camera you saw never stops. No? So we were moving in a place with thousands thousand extras. It was yeah. in the middle of the COVID, the strong, yeah. and we were like, we're gonna die. <laughs> we're probably gonna die, but we're gonna be proud because we were we died in the middle of a. Beautiful shot. And it wasn't... It's all worth it. It wasn't a set. It was a real place. And this place was kind of falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was. And, but the amazing, amazing thing is that there was not one people uh, with COVID. And we, the extras, they were 1,000 or 900. I don't know how many. It's, wow. So there, yeah, for the camera, we had to like rehearse the shoot. No, you go first, me, then like dancing, no? But actually the, the, the scene of the dancing, when I'm dancing, it's, it was my, my, my flow. I, it was not choreographed. Hmm. It was very familiar for me. It was very familiar for me, the plays, the extras, the music. Hmm. I've been in such parties for, 50 years. I, I know, I saw I know how to. Those parties. You saw me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, this kind of dancing, forgetting about the rest of the people, that's also something I used to do. So it was also I, I think natural. I think I saw you doing that at the, the party in, 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 in Telluride. Telluride yes. You saw? I saw that. It was very <laughs> familiar from. However, I must say my experience at the dance scene was very different. Well, it was hard. Like I did, we did struggle. I and and I say that because we were there for like two and a half, three weeks. No, in that place, <laughs> and um, we and at one point, Alejandro, it was like a Friday, and he, we were doing, we had, we had shot all day doing that one take sequence. Um, and he just didn't like it. And he was like, I don't like it. Something's not working, like choreography, like it's off. We're gonna go come back in the weekend. You guys are gonna rehearse this and get it right. And we'll come back on Monday. And if not, we'll be here another two weeks. And he literally said that and we were just like, and we went back on Saturday. I don't, you didn't, well, yeah, maybe you he were there. He never spoke that way to me. No. <laughs> 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 no, not to you. Uh, but, so, um, yeah, so we went back on Saturday. Like, he didn't even go on Saturday to the rehearsal. Like, it was just us. And then um, you and Grisela didn't go. And we just rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. And then we they came back that, that Monday. And then eventually we did get it. So it was, so, it was very worth it in the end. I'm going to open this up for some, <laughs> please. I'd like to uh, open it up for a few questions. And so please, uh, questions, uh, less statements, and... Uh, and I will repeat those questions for the audience. So uh, raise your hand, the gentleman right here. Uh, is there one scene you can talk about in particular that you haven't already talked about that you surprised yourself, and if there's something you feel really works so well? The question is for Dan Yell. Uh, is there one scene in particular that really worked for you and you felt really good about? Mm, no, maybe not one scene, but there's something in the that for me was new to see, and the, the way I was looking, my eyes. I saw something really different, no? But I can tell you that there was one scene where I was blocked, for example. The scene is finally not in the movie, not because I was blocked, <laughs> because it was originally in the movie. Then he decided to take it away because of the, the flow of the story. But I was blocked because this was really close to me. You know? I, it took me a while to understand with a, a therapeuta, with a, a therapeuta, with a therapist, I go, 
we tried to, to understand what this was, because the line was, I feel so happy, but I, I am terrified of feeling happy because I always lose it. So I was not aware that this was also my story. So my ego was blocking that to protect me and to not go there, no? So when we went to shoot that, I was just blocked. I couldn't, I, I, I should uh, cry. The, in the script was written, he cries from the stomach. So it's not like, <laughs> but <laughs> really. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And he said, don't worry, don't worry, we we'll come next Saturday. And then I said, oh no, next Saturday, it's gonna happen the same because I don't know what's happening. So I had a terrible week saying, I'm not gonna make it. Or maybe yes, no, yes, no, wow. It was horrible, horrible. But I was not aware that it was a, 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 a thing that was so close to me that I, it was. And then finally, I did it, and it worked. It worked, and we went to the next one, and it's a pity you cannot see it. <laughs> Man, there, it's a pity you cannot see a lot of things. Yeah. He, he told us his first, maybe he's going to get angry if I say this, Alejandro. But his fir the first cut was four hours. <laughs> so now it's, it's two and a half. It's two and a half, so imagine how much how many scenes and material are? Yeah, I'm sure. I hope it'll happen. All right. Uh, uh, let's see. There's a gentleman there. Okay. George. One. What does Bardo mean? <laughs> well, in uh, in the West, Bardo, or at least in Spanish. I don't know if in English. Bardo is also a, a, a poet, a lyric poet that goes from town, in the early times, goes from town to town telling stories and all that. That, that uh, could be one way to understand it. And the other one is Bardo is a Tibetan word that means this category of the souls that are in transit. Once the body is dead, the soul goes to a, a, a dimension or a place where it's dealing if he's gonna come back to the earth, to a new body, reincarnate, or he goes to the next level and don't reincarnate again. Bardo is that zone. Uh, the, 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 the Catholic translation for that is limbo. Maybe it sounds to you? Limb? Limbo, yeah. I mean, we were actually, the movie was called Limbo while we were filming it. And then they changed the name because I think a Russian film or something came out like last year that was called Limbo. So they had to change it to Bardo. But it, it Limbo, you know, it's, and I also like sometimes, I mean, in interviews, I've been saying it's that journey or the kind of that zone transition between life and death as well. And like seeing the light and, and then going off. So, but yeah, that's a. Uh, Bardo. We're all in our own Bardos. We are all always experiencing Bardos. It's very metaphorical as well. It's, yeah, I think like for, for things uh, are dying and being transition. born. And yeah, oh, there's always this transitions in our life. Uh, speaking of that, I just want to ask you something, and you don't have to answer it. You could say it's better not to answer it. or, But it seems when you're talking about the state of Bardo uh, in, in terms of, uh, uh, you could say it's a wake or a dream, but we know what we're talking about here that the construction of the movie always seemed to me that without it saying, you know, obvious in many movies, this is a flashback uh, and you're going back and then you go back to the present. Time is not working like that. But it does appear like when, uh, just from my perspective, that like when your wife is talking to you and your lips aren't moving, it's coming from that place of the in between the worlds when you were dying. Um, is this true, or can it be interpreted in many ways? No, I think it's perfect. Is that a, that's a way of yeah. of of uh, understanding this? Maybe when I read it, I didn't get that. And the second time I saw the movie, I thought ah, this movie lasts four seconds only. 
when well, he's yeah. just four seconds. Like life. On that note, I want to thank you so much for sharing no, thank this you. great film with us. Thank you. Thank you.